All right, well, the World Health Organization has made major changes to their pandemic treaty. So it's not the power grab that we've been freaking out about. It's still a power grab. I'm still freaking out, but less. So I'm not gonna call this a win. I'm gonna call it progress because at least the WHO knew that we were hip to their plan to usurp sovereignty of all member nations. They're not trying to do that, but they still are trying to grab power. So at least they were listening. They're like, oh, our evil plan's been thwarted. We better dial down the evil a little. Or but hide the it. the plan is still in place. Yeah. Well, um, wh- let's look together at these changes, the nuances of them, and you can decide whether or not it's it's hidden. Is it still there? Um, I still don't want it. I'm, that's a... I'm still dead set against it and for various reasons, but let's at least remind ourselves what we were the most afraid of is that this was a document that the WHO was trying to pass that would give them the power to implement pandemic measures such as lockdowns, vaccines and other treatments, and it would mandate population censorship and surveillance and give the WHO the power to declare anything they wanted a pandemic risk and then say, oh, change that. So for instance, the way you grow your tomatoes, the way you eat local meat, all of that stuff, they could say, oh, pandemic risk, we're taking it. Uh, That was what the original document said. This is not me extrapolated, it was written. Now the vote is due on this in the next couple months and they were supposed to provide a draft version at least four months in advance so that politicians could read it, but they didn't, they were unforgivably late. They punished it, published it this week and the it, we're at the end of April right now. A vote is supposed to happen in May. Uh, so are they trying to like just slip things in? Well, it's a much shorter document. So at least politicians can be expected to read it. Let's go over it. Here it is. You can see published uh, 2024 proposal for WHO pandemic agreement. Now we linked you to it in the newsletter today, redacted.inc, so you can and should find it for yourself. We're gonna look at it, but first I wanna say that I don't think any government or organization should defer to this group, the WHO, period. They are sovereign rapists. That's what they are. Uh, When it was found out that they did let their doctors and staff basically act as a brothel in the Congo, they investigated themselves and then paid victims $250 each, but only if they went to classes. Please, I beg you to watch this video that we did on this Congo scandal and the WHO, uh, because you will learn all about it and learn exactly why they were never punished for this. And in fact, they are out of reach from punishment because they are sovereign. This is not the organization that should be making rules for the world. It's bad enough that YouTube defaults to the WHO in terms of their policy, meaning that we here on Redacted on YouTube cannot say anything that contradicts any health conditions and substances or guidances from the WHO. Uh, Even though the WHO got a lot wrong during the COVID-19 pandemic, including masking, which is so funny because if you now today go to the WHO's page for their guidance on masks, it says this, take a look. It says masks may provide protection, even though there's a lot of data showing that this is not true and that masking is not a neutral act. In fact, it can harm people. Uh, Here is just one of many examples of the WHO not following the medical research. But if we can put that screen back up, take a look at what it says there in orange. It's hard to say, see, it says, this page is no longer being updated. It remains live for reference purposes only. That says to me that they know they were wrong about masks, but they won't update it with the most current research. So they'll leave it as it is in case they want to implement masking again. Don't you think that's unconscionable? Is this the group? We're putting our eggs in this basket? Uh, All this to say that the WHO sucks. They should not be given any other power inside of any government or business, but they are still trying. So again, let's go back to the document. The most important part that they removed is the non-binding language. So before it said, your government, I don't know, Ireland, the UK, the United States, you sign here, what we say is now binding. 
they have removed that. So that's good, but it is very hard to get out. I'm going to show you that in a second. They still make the argument, though, that countries need to work together to manage and prevent pandemics. And this is the language here that gives me a stomach ache that's still in there. I realize this is hard screenshot for you to see, so you can screenshot this and zoom in if you want. But what they're saying is that p pandemic prevention and public health surveillance is still important. So they need all member states collaborative surveillance. I don't like that word. Um, and they still give themselves the power to decide anything is a risk of a pandemic. You see at the bottom, they say the parties recognize that environmental, climactic, social, anthropogenic and economic factors increase the risk of pandemics and endeavors to identify these factors and take them into consideration in the development and implementation of relevant policies, strategies, and measures in the international regional levels. So basically they are saying they can adapt necessary guidelines, recommendations, and standards about everything. So, okay, something that's environmental concern, something they think is a social concern, we need to be watching that, surveying it, and if we decide that it's a risk, then we can change it. We can change what that land is used. So they could, again, decide that livestock farming is a risk or any other food farm or a business is a climate change exacerbator and they could, that maybe could make it sick. And then uh, they say, we need to shut those things down. Uh, they drive this home with the idea of one health. They say that each country's farming practice basically is everyone's business because the world has the right to one health. It says in order to promote one health approach for pandemic preparedness, uh, recognizing the interconnection between people, animals, and environment that is coherent, integrated, coordinated, and collaborated. So what they're saying is they wanna implement regular reviewing practices of reviewing national policies and strategies. So you have to submit to this as a country um, and each country will agree to regular reviews of its animals. But look at the last one there, C, saying that they have to send in some trainers or educators to make sure that countries are doing the things that they want. Okay, uh, can we make sure that those trainers and educators not be rapists? How do I think we... they should change that wording, too, to re-educators. It's like re-education camp because it's like they're re-educating what they've already been doing for possibly centuries. <laughs> right. Uh, how do we sh assure, though, that we get a rape-free WHO staff this time? Congo didn't get that. Just curious. It's not in their paperwork here, um, given that that's what happened in Africa. Maybe in their hiring, when they when they go through the hiring, like on their your application to hire, your, your resume. Yeah. Um, that should be some like a checkbox that they have to check like, now. Check a box like like of what one to ten? Where are you on the rape situation? Right, yeah. one to ten. How many yeah. rapes have you done in your life? I'm not sure you're aware. We have a little bit of a history with this problem here at our uh, company. Just uh, curious, how, where you guys, where do you come down on that as a potential employee of our company? Right. Okay. So let's say there's a woman who's poor and has children and she's single. Uh, do you make her have sex with you in order to get the job? Yes or no? No, the answer is no. We're supposed to not be doing that. Is that wrong? Should I not have done that? That's exactly what they did in Congo. Okay, uh, here's another thing that I do not like in this treaty. They want each country to make sure that the laws in that country allow the WHO to make emergency declarations. Now let's take a look at this and tell me what this says to you. Does this say to you that they wanna make sure that if they take your freedoms away, the laws allow it? Look at this article 14, regularly, regulatory strengthening, that each party, that means country, shall take steps to ensure that it has the legal, administrative, and financial frameworks in place to support emergency regulatory authorizations for effective and timely approval of pandemic related health products during a pandemic. And then look before each party uh, shall strengthen rapid alert systems against substandard and falsified pandemic related health problems. So this says to me, they wanna make sure they have the right to implement whatever they want and that there should not be any local laws that stop them. Anybody else read it that way? Philip, 
David? Yeah, no? I mean, definitely. I think so. Definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Of course, they don't want sovereign power. So, of course, if they can sidestep any local laws, this is what this is the this is what we're handing over to them. Right. right? So this they're the whole saying point of it. if there's so consider the law that we went over in Louisiana that said the WHO shall not implement anything in Louisiana. Right. Exactly. Right. So what they're saying is that we need to go through your local ordinances. And if there's anything there that says you can't implement a lockdown, you can't have vaccine mandates, or you can't have any kind of forced medical examinations, anything like that, forced testing, that we need to make sure we strip those out of your laws so that we have the right to put in any emergency that we want and any plan that we'd like. Um, one thing though, remember this placeholder that was in the draft last year where they had not defined these things yet, like potential for a pathogen or One Health surveillance or interpandemic or infodemic. Well, the infodemic was the thing that I really was worried about. Keeps me up at night, I'll admit. And interpandemic. Um, but they never defined it in this document. They left it out all together. Now, remember that this was from a previous WHO document that defined an infodemic as an overabundance of information, even accurate information that made it difficult for individuals to adopt behaviors that basically the WHO wanted. So even if you were getting accurate information about the risks of vaccines, that made it hard for them to put a vaccine in you so that was an infodemic, true information about a certain vaccine. You might know what I'm talking about. Well, infodemic is gone, at least from this document, but the spirit of it is there with what they call communication and public awareness. What they want to do is strengthen science, public health, and pandemic literacy. So they want to educate you. I mean, it, you can hear that I'm putting educate in quotes here to what they want you to know. Also, they want to conduct research to inform policies on factors that hinder or strengthen adherence to public health and social measures. So they want to find out why you might be hesitant to do what they want. Research those things. They didn't say stop it, but they want to research it and educate you exactly how they want to. And so that who means... Go ahead. Are, they're going to start going into the grade schools and everything, and we're going to see a, a big uh, push for reefer madness again. You guys ever see that? You know, no. that kind of thing. Those propaganda films that are going to tell kids, okay, kids, here, your parents aren't on board with this probably, but this is important for the, for the world uh, to believe these things. It's indoctrination. Okay. That's literally in 1984 when you tell on your yeah. own parents. Like the neighbor goes to jail because his daughter reports him. Okay. Um, and who will pay for this? Well, the WHO will decide what you pay. It's a, it's like omakase. <laughs> you know what that is? Mm -hmm. The Japanese meal. Is that what you call it, Philip? Do you know where you like, they just bring out whatever they decide you're going to eat. And then the bill is really expensive because oh. they've decided. I think that's what it's called. Uh, that's basically how we Maybe. will sign up for for that. Can you look that up? Is it omekase? I'm, I'm pretty sure. How do you spell anyway, it? Uh, just like it sounds. <laughs> right. <laughs> so what they're saying here is they're going to look into your country's budget, decide they're going to conduct relevant needs and gaps. So they'll just look. What does the United States have? This is what they can afford. Okay, great. This is this is what we're going to charge you, um, and they you will are right, decide. By the way. It's omakase. Omakase. Okay. Yeah, it literally yep. means I'll leave it up to you. Commonly used when dining at a Japanese restaurant where the customer leaves it up to the chef to decide. Like when uh, eating at uh, Morimoto in Philadelphia. They, uh, yeah, this is a... He just like would make whatever he would... This is like what you don't want to go out with your friends because then you end up with like a $500 bill and you're like, how'd this happen? And I ate five things. Could you right. imagine if every rest like fast food mcdonald's not did that you just walked in and they hand you a bag and it's like thank you you just walk out and like right. i don't wonder what i got today the, the mcplant <laughs> yeah. i don't want the mcplant what kind of garbage is this and you're it's 150 dollars yeah. that it basically the who is omikase for nation states so if you the, it will go on your tax bill who knows what it costs. They did not give us a budget. Now, this treaty is a five-year agreement and it's set to be revised every five years. But if your country wants to withdraw, so let's say you're Canada, 
Justin Trudeau signs the document, but then you vote in Pierre Polivier, and he Polyev. wants, sorry, uh, he wants to withdraw from the WHO pandemic treaty. He can only do so two years after it was signed into law, and your withdrawal takes a full year. So take a look at these terms, is that you can withdraw only two years from the date that it was signed, and a withdrawal takes one year from the date of receipt. So you're in it for at least three years, no matter what. You can only get out. Uh, it's like a gym, gym membership. You can't, re thanks for that notice that you're leaving. You're on the hook for another full year. What I want to know is, does the WHO have a have their own military? Because if not, then get bent. You know, I'll leave when I want to. What right. are they going to do? You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> come at me, bro. I don't know. I don't know. They must have some kind of secret, like Janissary army. I don't know. Um, and again, if your country agrees to it, here are the dates that they will sign it, that it will get kicked off is June 17th and uh, this World Health Assembly in June um, and thereafter at the United Nations headquarters in New York from July of 2025. So TikTok, you guys, this is coming. Uh, so all of these edits, are they a ploy to get countries that are against this to buy into it? Such as we should ask these leaders who have spoken out against it. Here is Robert Fico, the new prime minister of Slovakia, who recently said Slovakia will absolutely not be signing any pandemic treaty. Watch. Že smer slovenská sociálna demokracia nebude podporovať posilnenie právomocí Svetovej zdravotníckej organizácie na úkor suverených štátov pri riadení boja proti pandémia. Poviem to, že takýto nezmysel mohli vymyslieť len nenažraté farmaceutické firmy, ktoré začali vnímať odpor niektorých vlád proti povinné vakcinácii. Podľa ústavy Slovenskej republiky sa na platnosť takýchto medzinárodných dohôd v prospech Svetovej zdravotníckej organizácie vyžaduje súhlas Národnej rady Slovenskej republiky. A ja neverím, že suverénne slovenské politické strany takýto súhlas vyslovia. Smer a jeho poslanci určite nie. OK. Now, New Zealand, the new deputy Prime Minister Ron Winston Peters has also spoken out against the WHO, indicating he is not on board with this post here. Also in Japan, there have been massive rallies in the last few weeks even against the WHO, and these have been peacefully organized. Watch. Okay. So what do you think? Did they tone it down because they had to? Will world leaders say, oh, hey, it's less evil. We'll sign it now. Uh, my take on it is I still absolutely don't want it. I want it in the shredder. Uh, but what do you think? Read it for yourself and let us know in the comments below. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video. You know, YouTube thinks that you'll actually like this next video right here. It's personalized based on your own viewing habits. So if you watch the video, please leave a comment. Let us know what you think about it. And we will see you next time, everyone.